Hi, my name is Cold Beer, and let's start with Stray. The game has an overwhelmingly positive review score and is worthy of the full price without a doubt, but now you can obtain it for a little bit cheaper. This is a cat simulator, but not a usual one, if you know some usual ones, because the game is set in a cyberpunk world and that stirs the pot a bit. The game is a third-person cat adventure set in a detailed neon-lit alleys of a decaying cyber city and the murky environments of its seedy underbelly. You can roam surroundings high and low, defend against unforeseen threats and solve the mysteries of this unwelcoming place inhabited by nothing but unassuming droids, dangerous creatures and things. You know, like evil duct tape. It's your enemy. If in your life a cat ever owned you, you know why. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 plus 2 more than 20 years ago, I bought some PC gaming magazine, and it had a CD with a Tony Hawk 2 demo inside. You know, at that time, nobody had internet, so CDs that came with journals kept us up to date. I installed the demo, and super unexpectedly, it became one of the best games I have ever played. I played, and played, and played, and my friends came over, and we played it together as well. We mastered the art of tricks without even seeing a full version of the game. Yeah, they really knew how to make great demo versions back then, that's for sure. But when the full version finally arrived, I couldn't afford it because I was poor and had no money. And I'm not talking about the original version, I have a pirated CD in mind that at the time cost around 20 liters in Lithuania. To put things in perspective, I have to say that my mama's salary was around 300 liters per month and the original CD of Tony Hawk 2 was priced around 200 liters, so only millionaires around here could afford those back then. So sadly, this is all the experience I have with Tony Hawk the best demo I have ever played. And I have to mention that I never play sports games, maybe I should start. And this version, according to people who actually played it, is one of the best remakes ever made. Around 90% of positive reviews can confirm that with ease. Strange Horticulture here you'll find and identify new plants, pet your cat, speak to a coven, or join a cult. Use your growing collection to influence the story and unravel dark mysteries. You are a citizen of a charming town surrounded by hag-infested forests and rugged mountains. You are the horticulturist, owner of a local plant store. As a cast of colorful customers come by your shop, you are quickly thrust into an occult mystery stretching back hundreds of years. Explore the lands beyond your store to find new plants, but be careful. The dark woods and lakes are not always friendly to a simple herbalist. You might discover powers beyond your wildest nightmares or lose your mind completely. The game has an overwhelmingly positive review score, it's a true masterpiece. If you like interesting, non-cliché stuff, it's a must-play for you. Wall World this is a mining roguelite with tower defense elements and a very affordable price. Here you'll explore procedurally generated mines and discover fantastical biomes, find resources and technologies and purchase valuable upgrades. Fight off hordes of aggressive monsters using your mobile base and roam the world freely day and night in various weather conditions. Find traces of the others and boldly mine when no man has mined before. The game has a really fun concept, beautiful art style and reminds me a bit of a dome keeper, another beautiful indie game. People on Steam are saying that the game has a great replay value and a bit of a boring ending, but this game is the journey, not the destination. Hunt Showdown here you'll play alone or in teams as you search for clues to help you track nightmarish monsters and compete against other hunters who are after the same reward. Here you'll have to kill and banish your target, which will be some really horrible monster, but you will treat it as a sack of money instead. Collect the bounty and then get ready for the showdown. Once the bounty is in your hands, every other hunter on the map will be after your prize. Hunt has a very positive review score and it's very addictive, although it has a really steep learning curve and there is a huge chance that you will be shredded to bits by other, more experienced players. Despite that, almost everyone is saying that this game is awesome and super fun. Arcanum of Steamworks and Magic Obscura there is a big chance that you have missed this game 22 years ago. Well, I absolutely did. I have no idea why it wasn't popular in Lithuania back then when every kid was playing Baldur's Gate eight times in a row. So Arcanum of Steamworks and Magic Obscura is a straight highway to Nostalgia Town. Good thing is that the game was made in the time when everyone wasn't woke and some themes in the game are being thoroughly avoided by most of the games nowadays. Also, the game is not dumbed down. You know, I just recently played Diablo 4, it is a really fun game 
game but made in a way that an absolute idiot could play it. You don't even need to arrange stats anymore, everything is done for you. You just click, click, click and you win. That is amazing, but you know, it's not the same as before. And that is not the case in all good games. Here you'll find 16 primary skills including gambling and healing, 80 spells with 16 colleges of magic and 56 technological degrees with 8 disciplines. The game is huge and replayability is really high as well. Like really, I'm not kidding, here you'll find more than 300 unique characters and monster types. People on Steam are saying that if they could sell their soul to the devil for the remastered version, it will be a great bargain. Sadly, most of them are probably redheads, so the devil is not interested. Well, anyway, let's hope to see a remastered version someday in the future. Remnant 2 this is the sequel to Remnant from the Ashes, best known as Dark Souls with guns. The game pits survivors of humanity against new deadly creatures and godlike bosses across beautiful but menacing worlds. Here you can travel alone or with friends as a team and explore strange new worlds and beyond, overrun by mythical creatures while trying to stay alive. There are multiple worlds to explore with different types of creatures, weapons and items. Game has branching quest lines, augments, crafting and loot rewards that will test the result of even the most hardened players in dynamically generated dungeons and areas. Most of the players are saying that the second part is better than the first one, meaning that developers learned from their past mistakes and made an actually awesome game. Starbound this is basically a Terraria in space where you create your own story. There is no wrong way to play. You can go and save the universe from the forces that destroyed your home, uncovering greater galactic mysteries in the process. Or you may wish to ignore this heroic journey entirely in favor of colonizing uncharted planets, collecting rare creatures or delve into dangerous dungeons and lay claim to otherworldly treasures. Discover ancient temples and modern cities, trees with eyes, mischievous penguins and talking ding-dongs. Well, you'll be first to find those but you never know, universe is endless. Warhammer 40k Bolt Gun here without any hesitation, load up your gun and plunge into battle. You will experience a perfect blend of Warhammer FPS gameplay and the stylish visuals of your favorite 90s retro shooters. You will play a battle-hardened space marine on a perilous mission across the galaxy as you fight against the Chaos Space Marines and Demons. This boomer shooter style, well known from the games like Classic Doom, Duke Nukem or Heretic, is a real treat for older dudes like me, and also for a younger generation who wants to experience glory and feel like a true combat god, or, or goddess, or something in between, whatever you are, you will rock this. People on Steam are saying that the game doesn't offer a lot of replayability, but the level of entertainment it provides is massive. Although not as massive as your mama. The Pathless this is a perfect game for fans of Journey and Abzu, although with a tiny bit of more action implemented. Here you will become the Hunter, a master archer who travels to a mystical island to dispel a curse of darkness that grips the world. Soar through the air and forge a connection with your eagle companion. Perform fluid acrobatics and execute awesome trick shots with a unique archery system that allows effortless shooting while moving at high speeds. The evil one not rest until the world is destroyed, so what are you waiting for? And now I know that you are concerned about the most important thing. Can you pet the bird? And yes, you can, so it's automatically a good game. Also, it has very positive review score on Steam. 8-bit hordes. Basically, this is a Warcraft 3 if it would be made using the Minecraft engine. Here you'll find two factions, the Dark Orcs and their undead friends versus those annoying humans, dwarves, elves and all that puny stuff in general. You'll collect resources, build up and defend your base, amass your army of evil or, you know, pathetic good and ultimately crush your opponents. Game offers 24 offline campaign missions, 12 co-op missions to play with your mother-in-law and 10 multiplayer maps that support up to 8 trolls online, literally and figuratively. AI is present as well. It has multiple difficulty options, also it can play in a team with you or destroy you. Game is easy to understand and is really user-friendly. If you like RTS games, there is no doubt that you may like this one as well. Thank you for watching, have a nice day, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Blah, blah, blah. <sighs>